Hello everybody, hope you are doing well. Olivier is back with you after exams. Freedom Scientific launched a new firmware update for the Focus 40 and 14 5th generation and this new version includes a scratch pad. What is the scratch pad? It's a note taker as well as a BRF book reader. So Olivier will be with you to explain to you all the features of this new application and show you how to use it. Enjoy! Hello everybody, Olivier Danjou back with you for another podcast. It's been a while since I made podcast. I have been pretty busy with school, but now school is over, so I will have more time to make podcasts. And I'll start off by reviewing the new firmware for the Focus 5th generation. Alex told you a couple of weeks ago that the new firmware was pushed out. Well, a couple of weeks after that, they pushed a new firmware introducing a new feature. If you recall, when Alex made his description of the Focus 5th Gen, he told you about an SD card slot and that for now we did not know at the time, what would be the use for this SD card slot? Well, now with this firmware, the SD card slot has a use. And Freedom Scientific basically introduced a scratch pad. So you can take quick notes and store them on a micro SD card through the slot implemented into the focus. Freedom Scientific said that the focus can support a card up to 32 gigabytes. However, with the tests that I made, I was unable to use it with a 32 gig card. I wa I had to take an 8 gigabyte micro SD card. However, I don't know if the problems comes from my card or from my unit, but theoretically it's supposed to work up to 32 gigabytes. Right now we don't have other units to test with, so maybe if you test with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card and it works, let us know. So Today I will be covering the scratch pad with you. I'll be showing you how to access it. We will do some demonstrations and I will be covering with you the features of the scratch pad. So before we start, I want to show you how to install this firmware on your focus. Now before doing that, you want to make sure that your version is currently lower than 5.81-30 because if your version is the same or if your version is newer then you don't need to flash this firmware if you're listening this in a couple of months and you just bought your focus chances are that this version is already installed or even a newer version is installed so to check your version, if you're connected through USB, press the menu key twice. If you're connected over Bluetooth, press it once. I'll press it twice since my unit is connected over USB. Now I'll scroll down through the menu. So we have the usual stuff. Rest, clock, calendar, continue scrolling. We have language. We have a new item called Scratch, but we will come back later in the podcast. But just after the Scratch Pad, if you scroll down once, you will see Focus 40, and then you will see your version. In my case, this is 5.81-30. So I don't need to flash the firmware because I already flashed it. However, for the needs of the podcast, 
I did re-download the firmware and I will show you basically how it presents but I will not go through the entire process since my unit already has the firmware so I'm using a Windows 10 computer so I will go to the file explorer by pressing Windows E. Windows E. This PC items view multi select list box folders. Expanded. I will go Not to the D O documents downloads folder. D downloads. Enter. This PC items view multi select list box. Now I need to press F until I find F. Focus 5 underline F W underline update underline V5.81 30.zip. This file. So I'll need to press Shift F10 or if you have an application key, press Application. Shift F10, context menu, O, op, open in, open in, recognize, extract all dot dot dot, enter, enter on extract downloads, all. items view enter multi select enter. once again. And it's extracting the file. Focus 5 underline FW underline update underline V5.81-30. Items view multi select list box. Not selected focus 5 underline FW underline underline update dash V5.81-30.x 2018 dash so 05 press space space. To select focus the 5 underline FW file. underline underline update dash V5.8. Press enter to open it. Enter. Smart screen. About colon blank. Windows protected your PC. Tab. More info link. Enter. Tab. Run anyway button. So if you have a message like smart screen, you can click run anyway. That's what I will do. There's no threat in this. So you can run it without any issues. Enter. FS Braille Display Firmware Update 5.81-30 Dialog, Freedom Scientific, Focus 40 Braille Display, Current Firmware Version 5.81-30, Ready to Update Firmware, Update Firmware dot 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 button. So at this point you would click on Update Firmware, and then you would have a message telling you, Do not unplug your Braille Display while it is updating, and that's super important. So. At this point, you would have to click on a button that says Start Download. And then it will go to the update procedure. Once again, don't unplug your Braille display while it is updating because otherwise it will become unusable. Once it is done, you will have a success message asking you to restart your screen reader. By the way, you need to have JAWS installed on the computer that you will be performing the update. So make sure you have JAWS installed. JAWS doesn't have to be running, you can use another screen reader. For example, when I updated mine, I was using NVIDIA. But JAWS was installed on the computer, everything went fine. It may take a minute or two to update, so be patient, do not close the program. Eventually it will restart, and you will be good to go. I will Alt F4 now, because I don't need to flash it. Alt F4, Downloads, Items View Multi Select List Box. Now Focus. that the firmware is flashed, you will need to insert a micro SD card into your Braille display to use the scratch pad. The slot for the micro SD card is located on the front of the focus near the power button. So you need to insert the SD card. Personally, I needed sighted assistance to insert it because apparently it is tight. So you might need sighted assistance. But once the card is inserted into the unit, you will need to prepare it. Assuming that the focus is still plugged in on your computer, you want to unplug it. That's what I just did. Anyway, you will need to unplug it to insert the SD card. You will need to turn it off also. So that's what I will do. I'll turn it off. Okay, now that the focus is completely off, what you want to do now is Hold the left pan button. The pan button is the button with an arrow at the extreme left of the focus. 
So you want to hold the left pan button as well as the power button until the braille display turns on. Then once it is on and once you see the time you can release both buttons. And now you want to replug it into your computer. New notification from autoplay, USB drive left paren e colon right paren, select what happens with removable drives. Okay, so now we heard a notification that USB drive E, so that's the name of the SD card. My SD card was detected. So let's open the file explorer. Windows E. Just show you. This PC, items view multi-select list box, folders expand U, devices and drives expanded. USB drive left paren e colon right paren, USB drive 7.23 gigabytes, 7.23 gigabytes, 3 of 3. So it is an 8 gigabyte. Now you want to make sure that your SD card is formatted in FAT32. So to know the format of your SD card, you will need to go into the properties by pressing Alt Enter. Alt Enter. USB drive left paren e colon right paren properties dialog, general page, drive e colon, label colon edit. And to know the format with JAWS, there's a shortcut on your numeric keypad. Press together the number zero as well as the minus sign to join the JAWS cursor to the PC cursor. Then use your arrow keys until it says format. Make sure that the format is FAT32. Once you're done viewing your information, press the plus on your numeric keypad. Now, if you don't have a numeric keypad, you can press insert B to read the entire dialog box. However, JAWS will read much more information, so that's what we're gonna do. Pressing insert B. USB drive left paren e colon right paren properties. Dialog. Has focus. General. Dialog. Has focus. Label colon. Edit. Has focus. Type colon. USB drive. File system colon. FAT32. Used space colon. 800 escape. This PC. Okay, Items so file system FAT32. If it is not FAT32, you want to press Shift F10 or Application. Shift F10. Context menu. O. Open. O. Open in. Open in. Pin to. Open. Open auto. Scan with. Give access. Open as. Include a pin to. Format. Eject. Format. Dot. 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 A. And you want to click Format. Enter. Leaving menus. This PC. Items view multi select list box. Devices and drives expanded. USB drive left per an e colon tab. Close button. Alt plus C. So the cursor was on start, so I pressed tab. Tab. Capacity colon combo box. Tab. File system combo box. FAT32 left paren default right paren. File three. system, Alt so you F. want to change it to FAT32 if it is not already. Shift, shift tab. Close button. Alt plus C. But in this case it is, so I will click close. Space. This PC. Items view multi-select list box. Okay, once you're sure that your SD card is correctly formatted, you will need to extract a couple of files. And by the way, you can find all of these files on the Canidialog website. So, they are in my downloads folder. D. Downloads. Enter. Downloads. Items view multi f Focus 5 SD card.exe. This one, Focus 5 SD card.exe. Open it. 7 zip self extracting archive dialog. Extract to colon edit. C colon backslash users backslash admin backslash downloads and you backslash can alt just plus press x. Enter. Enter. Focus 5 SD card.exe. And you will have a folder called FSI. FS. FSI. This one. So what you want to do is copy this folder, the entire folder, then go to your SD card and paste it to the root of your SD card. So now we will go onto my SD card and I will show you how it should look.
Items view multi-select list box, not selected USB drive left per an eco enter. Items view list box read only. Items view multi-select list box, not selected FSI, 2018 space, FSI enter. FSI, items view multi-select list box, not selected focus 5, 2018-04-3455 pm here. space. Focus enter, shell folder view, items view list box read only, items view multi-select list box, not selected scratch pad, 2018-04-3455 so pm, scratch pad, size, and a folder called site, so let's go into scratch, scratch pad. pad, enter, shell folder view, items view list box read only, items view multi-select list box, not selected books, 2018-03-4, so notes, and a notes folder. By default, these are blank. So let's go back. Shell folder view. Items view list box read only. When I say these are blank, I mean there are no files inside of these folders. Size. Enter. Size. Items view multi select list box. Not selected SPAD. 2018 04 SPAD. And here you have a. Enter, bunch of check, files. shell folder view, items view list box read only, help. You have the help file, so you should not delete them. So that's how your SD card should look like. Now let's close this. Alt F4. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and launch the scratch pad. Now keep in mind there is no TTS inside of the focus, so everything is written in Braille. So, what I will do, I'll press the menu key, and now I will use the rocker bar to scroll until I find scratch pad, which is located right after language. So scratch pad, when you press enter on it, oh, true, I forgot. Once you're done putting your files onto your SD card, you need to turn off your focus and turn it back on. Because now on the Braille display, it says SD card is used. That's because I forgot to turn it off and turn it back on. So do this. So now the focus is back on, so we can return into the scratch pad. There's a shortcut, by the way, if you don't want to go to the menu and click on scratch pad. So the shortcut to open the scratch pad is the menu button. So you press the menu button, and at the same time, you press the letter N. That's dot one, three, four, five. So once you do that, you arrive in a blank document. You can fill your cursor as if you would be in a Word document. And now you can begin typing some text. So I will type, uh, hello, this is a demo with the scratch pad on the new focus fifth generation period so now I have some text written and I will show you a couple of things we can do with it first we can save it now you have two ways to do it the first is by going to file and then save us to make the like kind of menu bar this is not a menu bar but you know where you have file edit the equivalent of pressing alt you press the menu key so now I have file. If I use the rocker bar down, I have edit, export, help, and we are back to file. Now save it. 
I will need to go to file and then save as. But there's another way to do it. The shortcut to save your document to perform a save as is right shift and A. Remember, the shift keys are the keys located above the space bar. There are two of them, one at the left and one on the right. So to save as, press right shift and A. If you are in your menu and you want to exit out of the menu, like for example, on my Braille display, I'm still in the menu, like I see file, edit, export. So to exit the menu, what I do, I press chord with Z. That's dot one, three, five, six, and space. Now I am back into my document and I will do right shift with A. So now it says enter file name, so I'll say English test, English space demo, then pressing enter. It said file was saved. And when I say enter, I mean dot eight. So now I'll press enter again. I'm back into my document. Okay, so now I positioned my cursor at the end. Remember, I wrote uh, this is a test with focused fifth gen. I will write some more text. So I really love this product. Okay, now let's say I want to exit the document. What I do, I press right shift with the letter X. So that's, that's one, three, four, and six. And because I have made some changes and I did not save them, it's asking save your work Y slash N. So yes or no. So I will hit Y for yes. And now it says file was saved. Now I pressed enter. And since I closed the scratch pad, I am back with what I was doing. So I'll return into the scratch pad by pressing menu with N. Now what I will do, I will open the file. I will hit the open command, which is right shift with O. And now it says select file. So I will use the rocker bar, the left rocker bar, and I will go down. So now I have two folders. Remember the notes folder and the books folder. So now when I press the down arrow, the cursor is on notes. So I press dot eight to validate. And now I will down. And here is my English demo document. So pressing dot eight. And it brought me where I was. Meaning if you are reading, let's say you're reading a huge document, a huge book, it will keep track of where you were. That's a pretty cool feature. So now I made a new line. I will write, I'm glad to make podcasts again. So let's say I just want to save this. The um, shortcut to do it is right shift and letter S. And it says file was saved. Pressing enter. Now I will show you the export feature. The focus does not allow you to export the files into text files. Like 
Let's see, you will have a Braille Note Apex. You will have the possibility to have your files directly into text format. The focus doesn't allow that because it doesn't have any Braille table, meaning the Braille table of your screen reader will determine how the translation will look like. So right now I'm using an English version of JAWS with the traditional English United States Braille table, no contracted. So what I will do, I will open on the computer, I'll open Notepad. Search box edit. N. O. Notepad. Enter. Untitled dash Notepad. Edit. The focus is connected over USB. I will hit the menu button. Now I see File, Edit, and then Export. I'll press dot eight on Export. What you heard is basically all of the text that I wrote pasting. So if I up arrow on the computer. I'm glad to make podcast. Hello, this is a demo with the scratch pad on the new Focus 5th generation. I really love this product. Hello, this I'm glad to make podcasts again for blank. Oh, that's because I wrote a four instead of a period. Oh, true. Because... Anyway, it's my mistake. So, it wrote, basically, what I wrote. It wrote it on the computer. Now, what I will do, I will select all of the text. So, to select text, basically, how it works. You need to place your cursor where you want the selection to begin. Once you did that, you press left shift with the letter M as a mic. That's that one, three, four. So I want to select the entire document. So I put the cursor after the four. What I will do now, I'll press left shift with S. That's that two, three, four. So once you pressed S, you will see all of your selected text with dot seven and eight, as if it would be a regular selection. So once your text is selected, you press left shift and C to copy it. Left shift plus X to cut it and if you want to delete it you press left shift with D and if you want to paste it that's left shift and P as paste. I don't know why they did not put V because on Windows this is control V. What I will do I will delete it. So left shift and D. And now all of the text is deleted. So I will write some contracted braille now on the focus. So I wrote a sentence and it says, Hello, this is a test to show contracted braille. I wrote it in contracted braille on the focus. I needed help for that because I don't know English contracted braille. So right now the braille table is set to normal computer braille. You know, no contracted. And as I told you earlier, there is no braille table in the focus. So the focus will transmit the characters to JAWS. So what I will do now is I will press the menu button. I will 
click on export and watch what will happen. So the text is pasting now. So let's have a listen to what it wrote. Question mark is a tech question. Space I S space A space T E slash space T O space percent left brace space Y space three T R A C T dollar space comma B R L four blank. So it wrote something but it's not understandable so because it was written in contracted braille we will need to go ahead and change the braille table to be in contracted braille so what i will do i will delete this selected hello this blank and i already had something written so that's why you heard kind of hello but Let's go to the setting center by pressing insert six. Notepad dash joy setting center dialog. Okay, let's open the default by pressing control shift D. Joy setting center dash default left paren all applications right paren. Tab tree view level zero user closed. Okay, One let's set B for braille. B braille closed. Let's open it with right arrow. Braille, open, six items. Now down arrow. Level one, general, closed, one of six. Okay, let's Braille. go to general, right arrow. General, open, nine items. Now we need to find something called Braille translation. Level two, translation closed, Here. one of nine. Open general, it. translation open, six items. Okay. Level three, language English dash United States, one of six. Correct. Translation, output computer Braille. Output computer Braille. So I was down arrowing. And to open, I was right arrow. So now we need to press space. Space, U.S. English grade 1, 2 of 5. U.S. English grade 1, that's not what we want. Space, U.S. English grade 2, 3 US of 5. U.S. English grade 2. Space, Unified English Braille grade 1, Unified 4 of 5. Unified English Braille grade 1. Space, Unified English Braille grade 2, 5 of grade 5. Grade 2, that's what we want. And now let's down arrow. Input computer braille. Input computer braille, so let's change it. Space, unified English braille grade 2. That's two. what we want. So now let's hit apply and OK. Tab, read only at tab, apply button, alt, space. Tree view, into shift tab, search box edit tab, tree view tab, read only tab, OK button. Space, untitled dash notepad, edit. Now we are back into notepad, so I'll press. Menu again. Export. Now let's have a listen. This is a test to show you contracted braille. Much better, isn't it? So that's how you do that. Now, if you want to switch back to the Braille table that you were, just reopen the setting center with insert six. Notepad dash jaw settings. Jaw settings center dash default left paren all applications right paren. Okay, let's tab. tab tree view. B. B. Braille. Cl Braille. Braille. Open. I will go faster. Level one. General. Close. General. General. Level two. Translation. Cl translation. Translation. Open. Level three. Language English dash United States. Output Unified English Braille grade two. Space. Computer Braille. One of five. So we are back to computer Braille. Now if I down arrow. Input unavailable. This option is not it available. It said for input unavailable, but that's normal. Tab. Read only at a tab. That's it. Apply button. Tab. Apply. OK button. Whoops. Shift tab. Space. Tree view tab. Read only edit. Select a braille input mode from the list. The first tab. OK button. That's it. Space. Okay. Untitled dash notepad. Edit. 
And by the way, when you are in the scratch pad, you cannot see in Braille in real time what's happening on the computer. If you want that to happen, what you need to do is press the menu key with the letter B. So that's one and two. What happened now? I am in my notepad. So just show you if I H E L L O space. So you can hear that's Jaws speaking right now. The notepad is kind of minimized. So if I want to return into it in the scratch pad on the focus, what I do, I press menu with N. Once again. And now I am back into the scratch pad. I would also like to go into the edit menu. Well, into the different menu in general to show you the different options available. We've talked a lot about keyboard shortcut, but we did not explore the menus and they are not that long. So let's begin with file. So you have new, open, save, save as, delete, and exit. So to get out of a menu, chord Z. So now the cursor is on file. Now if I go in edit, there's cut, copy, paste, paste time. So you can directly paste the time, paste date, find. So you can find, you can look for a particular word. Find next, find the next word that you were looking for. And we are back to cut. So pressing chord Z. Of course, I did not tell you all of the shortcuts available, but they are written in the help, which we will see how to access in a minute. So after edit, this is export. And this is the help. If I press enter on help, what will happen is it will open the BRF help file. Because yes, the scratch pad can read BRF files. So Alex told you about Stella Library in a previous podcast. So if you download BRF books, you can basically read them onto your focus. What you have to do is copy them into the books folder. Remember, there's a books folder and you will be able to read them basically. So when you open the help, it will open the correct BRF file. In this case, the focus language is English, so it opened the English BRF file. While we are in a BRF file, I want to tell you that you have different navigation mode. Using the rocker bar, you can navigate either by line or by paragraph. You even have a third option which is called panning. We have three options, line, panning, and paragraph. And to change these options, you use the mode button. The mode buttons are located above the nav rockers. The nav rockers are near the cursors so we have one at the left and one at the right so they are near your narrow cursor so to change mode just press the button above the navigation rockers right now it is set to line but if i want to move my paragraph all i have to do is press the mode button 
now it's panning and now it's paragraph so now if i use the down rocker bar i navigate by paragraph instead of by line if i press it again now i'm back to line also if you want to move to your cursor to the previous word use chord with dot 2 chord with dot 5 will move you to the next word dot 3 with space so chord 3 will move you to the previous character and dot 6 with space bar will move you to the next character now a last thing that i want to tell you that i forgot to tell you earlier is you need to eject your sd card properly so i closed the scratch pad i will connect the focus back onto the computer and it is very important to do that just so you don't mess things up Okay, the focus is plugged back onto the computer. Okay, so now what do you do? Well, open the file explorer. Windows E. This PC. U. Devices and drives expanded. USB drive left paren E colon right paren. Okay, USB so you drive want to shift F10. Gigabyte, shift F10. Context menu. O. Open. O. Then down arrow until eject. Open. Open. Skip. Give it. Open. A, include. Pinned. Format. Eject. J. And press enter. Enter. Leaving menus. This PC. Items view multi select list. Box. And you hear Devices a confirmation. New notification from Windows Explorer. Safe to remove hardware. The USB mass storage device device can now be safely removed from the computer. Dot, dot Windows Explorer. And then you can unplug it safely. And you're done. Now, if you go on a computer and if you want to go to your notes, folder to see the file you will see that this is a weird extension in fact there is no way for the scratch pad of the focus to make text notes so readable by any computer and the reason for that is as i demonstrated because there is no braille table built in into the focus so everything relies on the screen reader braille table so that's why there is no possibility to have direct text document so thank you so much for listening i know this was a quick overview but again as i said if you want more information, everything is in the documentation. And if you need help on how to update your focus or on how to insert the SD card, don't hesitate to contact us. It will be a pleasure for us to help you. So thank you so much for listening. This was Olivier and I will catch you in the next one. Before the end of this podcast, I would like to say you thank you for your loyalty to this series of podcasts on assistive technologies. I would also like to thank our loyal collaborator. As a reminder, I would like to inform you that Canadialog will not provide free technical support on product presented during these shows and that are not sold directly by Kenny Dialogue. Please note that our podcasts are now available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, as well as on Victor Devices by consulting the North American English suggested podcast list from Humanware. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact us via email at podcastwitness at kennydialogue.com that is p-o-d-c-a-s-t-s at c-a-n-a-d-i-a-l-o-g dot com or by phone on our toll-free number at 1-888-730-0003 again 1-888-730-0003 extension 555 
extension 555. I also invite you to visit our website which contains a lot of useful information at www.kennydialogue.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for listening.